In this screencast, we're going to look at predicting single displacement or single replacement reactions. And in a single displacement or replacement, depending on which text source you're using, um, you are switching um, one element switches. And so if you look at the graphic that I've provided on your page here, you can see that you have this AB, so this yellow and blue circle, and then you add a third colored circle, or C, and you produce um, the A is now by itself, and the B and C are combined. So in this case, you've taken the B element, and you've moved it onto the other element. Now, you do have to have likes replacing likes. Let's write that out. Likes replace likes. So, for instance, in a compound, you will have metals replacing metals and nonmetals replacing nonmetals. Okay, so some graphics to look at here. You can see in the top graphic, you can see that the A and the B have switched um, compounds so that you have now liberated the B by itself and the A has taken on the new um, piece. So um, if you notice the B and C, the C is the second element over here on the left, so it is also the second element on the right. Now, to decide if the reaction actually goes, so um, is there no reaction as a possible answer, or does the reaction actually occur? And what you do is you look at a thing called the activity series. And the activity series says this, you can only replace a more active, replace with, I'm sorry, replace with a more active um, element. So, for instance, the most reactive element wants to be in the compound. So these want to combine over here. And these over here are happy not combining. running out of room. These are happy not combined. And if you look at these elements in the activity series, you can see things like gold, silver, platinum, copper, the metals that you're all able to hold in your hand and we make jewelry out of are the least reactive. And that makes sense because do you really want to wear jewelry that's going to react with everything in the, in the air and in the water? So you don't want a reactive, um, you don't want reactive jewelry. So this side is the least reactive, and over here with lithium, rubidium, potassium, they are extremely reactive, and they will react with almost everything. So the rule is that a more active um, element can bump off or replace a less active element. So you're going to need to recognize the order in the activity series. And the activity series will be given to you, so you'll use that, that chart or graphic to help you figure out what's going to happen. So let's look at this equation down here. We have Fe and PbNO3. Okay. So first of all, we have to figure out what the Fe is. Is it a metal or a nonmetal? And what part of this compound is it likely to replace? And Fe and Pb are both metals, so we have to check on the activity series to see is Fe more active or is Pb more active. So in our graphic we have Fe here and Pb is here. The more active element is Fe, so it wants to combine. Therefore, the products would be FeNO3 and Pb by itself. The Pb gets bumped off. So when you're looking at this equation, on the left side here, we have to make sure that we know the charge of PB. So in this picture, it's, it's plus 2. And um, we can tell that from the, um, the subscript over here. And on the right, when we combine our Fe with the NO3, we most often will take on the same charge. So the Fe becomes a plus 2. When you are making compounds, you have to remember to cross the charges. All right, so I have two problems here for you in the activity series again. I am giving you AlCl3 and Na, and I'm asking you to decide, do we form any products? So the first thing you need to do is find the Al and the Na 
on the activity series. And I see AL is here, and I see NA is here. So between aluminum and sodium, which one is more active? And you should be looking and saying, okay, sodium is more active. And the more active element wants to be in the compound. So is the more active element in the compound right now? And you would say, no, the more active element is here by itself. So the reactants or the um, products, I'm sorry, the products that you're going to make will have sodium switching in with the um, chlorine and you will bump aluminum off by itself. When you do that, you have to look up the charges and the charge on Na is plus one and Cl is minus one. So we have to crisscross the charge. So NaCl is written by itself. And any metal um, by itself, as long as it's not a diatomic, does not need a charge so or a subscript. So the aluminum is fine by itself. To finish this problem out, we would need to balance it. And I see that I have three chlorines on the left. So I'm going to need three chlorines on the right. And then I am going to need to put a three in front of my Na. So that one's balanced as it's written. Now, moving on to the second example, we have um, Na and we have Fe. So in our activity series, I found Na is here and Fe is uh, there. As I look at them, which element is more active? And you're going to say the Na is more active. Is the more active element in a compound in this example? And you're going to say, yes, it is. So in this case, this one is no reaction. No reaction will occur because the Na is, is already combined. It has reacted to make a compound with the OH. So it's not going to be replaced by the iron.